back, everyone. This is another episode of Rediscovering God, our Abrahamic Contrast series. I'm joined with my friend Jason again. Hello, hello. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, this this topic. It's it it it's could, an important yeah. one. It's an important one. Sensitive, it's a very but important. One. Very sensitive. And, uh, you know, if you ask anyone in uh, each of these three faiths, they're most certainly going to give you <laughs> different answers, you know. Uh, but the topic today is, who is God? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I think, but, like, like when you when you come down to it, this is, like, the main, yeah, the this main is, topic of this is everything. Deeper. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Everything yeah. subsidiary. Yeah. Everything is subsidiary to this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first things first, guys, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications and give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. So that's a good question, though. Who is God? Well, who's God according to Judaism? Um, well, he's a, he's 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 the creator of everything. Right. right? The ultimate creator. Right. Uh, uh, so I uh, think the there's one name of God used in the creation account. Yeah, like right when you open Genesis. Yeah, and that is Elohim. Okay. So Jason, I think that is like one of the most important. Um, I actually think it is one of the most important name. Right. For God. Right. I really do. Right, because when you when you break it down, what exactly does it mean? Does Elohim right? mean? First, first before before you kind of break down Elohim, it is it is a plural. It's a, it's a it's a plural. It is. Hebrew word, right? And and this is where Christians say that, like, look, right there, your God is the first name you see. It's a plural name, so it has to be uh uh, you could that, that has to be Jesus and and the Father and the, and the Holy Spirit, right? Um. But the the singular version of the noun is also used as a name of God. Yeah, exactly, exactly. L, L, right? Even since Bob, we're going to be talking about Bob, Islam, Bob now, right? Well, so, well, since we're also going to be talking about Islam, mm -hmm. you hear that word El, you know, that same word in Arabic is Ila. Ila. Yeah. Extremely similar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you just want to take a second to kind of explain, unpack that for a second. Yeah. So when I first learned what uh, Allah actually like directly translates to, I was like, um, I was completely wrong about Islam. Right. right. So, right. so, all right is is the article the, that like ha in Hebrew. Yeah, ha like Hashem, mm -hmm. right? It's the right. So, so all means the and ila means uh, God, right? The one true God, right? So sh abbreviated is uh, Allah. So basically, when every time you say Allah, you're saying the God. Every time yeah. you reference al ila, right? Yeah, al ila. Because so, Elah can also mean a fake god, just like Elohim can mean fake gods too. And so can La, right? La right. is shortened, I guess, is short form of Elah, right? Mm -hmm. Right, and exactly the same way as L, like Baal is called an L. Right, right. right. That's definitely then, a, it's it's um. People need to learn that English and Semitic languages aren't compatible. Rules. You know, they different don't work rules. together. Yeah. A lot yeah, of people's, completely. a lot of names are actually contractions in Semitic. Yeah, language. actually, that's a very good point. And you see that exactly, that exact thing from the word Allah. You know, it's not like it's just, Allah, yeah. it's not like it's just a, because, you know, bef during the age of ignorance, as it was called, prior to Islam, before, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of course, there were moon deities and all that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that. You know, Muslims still worship a moon god. Right, you right. You need to right. realize that the name is just the god contracted into a single name. Right. And, like, I, there's a lot of places where I think that comes from. I mean, like, Muslims use a lunar calendar. So do Jews, right? You right. don't know that. Right? Exactly. Um, I believe one of the main gods at the Kaaba when before, like, before uh, Muhammad got his, his uh, revelation, was one of the main gods was a moon god. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course, like we see the crescent moon as a symbol of Islam now. Right. 
right. so obviously like you can see where the stereotypes come from but uh right but when you break but, down but like, who's the only culture in the world today that uses a strictly pure lunar calendar you know right. i had that exact conversation with a muslim right and they were like dude our calendar is lunar why else would we use the moon as you know so yeah. um yeah yeah it makes sense right like it's it's it's, it's just like who told you that the 12 months of the year are, 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 are the correct way of measuring the year? And you don't you, – you never see the, the attack on Judaism that they worship stars because the star – you know, the star of David is a – it's actually right. a shield. But the, yeah. Yeah. You, never, you never hear them worshiping stars. That's not right. – it's, it's on the flag. I, I get your point. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right? But I think the term like um, L needs to be defined, right? Right. And and it means the word power, right? And as far as I know, I believe like Elah means power too, like yeah, mm -hmm. right? It means power. So if you put the plural to that, it's powers. And I think when you're trying to understand uh, the Bible itself, you have to know the the civilization. And they believe right. that every god had its own power. And this is a Shem saying, no, I have all the powers. Right, I am all the powers. Exactly, all it all comes powers. from this one source. And yeah. I was telling you, I was telling you the story about about when I was talking to somebody, and he was like, "I don't believe in God, but I believe there was a power. There's a power." And I'm like, honestly, I think that probably is the most correct view of God. Right, that's the most monotheistic view you can have. Yeah, God is has there no is a power. Form, he has no image. Right. Okay? At least we worship it. Mm-hmm. Right, and and he's not a man. Explicitly says it twice, right? So it's like you might have the right idea of God. You may not call it God, but you might be right. Might be more correct than most people out there. Right, right. And you even see it in modern scholarship today. Um, I can't remember the name of the. There's a scientist. She actually went to MIT. Okay. Um. She believes in intelligent design. I don't think she adheres to any religion, but to her, there is just no rationale to things happening the way you know having what we have by accident. Right. Um, right. Yeah, I know. I know. A so lot it's attributed of to some it. type of higher power. Right. You know? And that. Right. That's a very. That's a very Semitic, very very Judaism monotheism way of looking at it Concept. that there is yeah. An, yeah. a higher power that from which everything was created right um yeah and 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 importantly right uh jews believe in obviously we know the god of abraham isaac and jacob right um islam muslims believe in the god of abraham and ishmael mm -hmm. so it's obviously the same god right that is very important to know. So they're not only calling the creator the God that created heaven and earth. Right. Or the power, if you wanna, if you wanna get down but, to. Uh, yes, the power, right? That created everything. It's also the power that Abraham faithfully followed. Right. right? And obeyed. And we do, we do even in the Torah we see in Genesis after Avram dies. Ishmael and Isaac, Isaac come buried together to bury father. their father. Yeah, yeah. I believe uh, some rabbis say that that's uh, yeah, yeah. They say that that uh, uh, Ishmael uh, repented in his later years, mm -hmm. right? And um, yeah, he just uh, came together with Isaac, and it says that in the Torah that they do they did bury Abraham together, right? So I guess we can uh, move on to just Christianity for a second, right. and then we can take it back because it's hard it needs to, to be addressed that yeah you have to contact, it needs to address that Christians do in fact believe in the one true God. Yes. But yes, they start adding layers to it. Yes, and I believe that they do that because you you pointed it out yourself multiple times. It's like. They they're stuck with the Bible. They're stuck with 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 Deuteronomy. They're stuck with they're stuck with Samuel. They're stuck with Numbers. They're stuck with everything. And saying that that I am God, the one God, mm -hmm. and and you know, 
And that's how they get the concept of God is a trinity. Right? Right. <clears throat> right. Because God because you're left with a one God concept, but then you have to glue that New Testament onto the end of it. Yeah, yeah. So you have to find ways to rationalize the two together. I mean, it's inca- incompatible, but and that's how you get these that's how you get these dissertation length explanations of how a singular god without form right can manifest himself in three persons. Right. <laughs> and I think like we have to touch back on a point we made uh, a little earlier when it, when like we noticed that uh, the name of God is plural. Mm-hmm. Right? How do we know that it stops at a trinity? Right? right. It doesn't say trinity. The Bible in, in its entirety doesn't say trinity. Right? How do you know it's only three forms? How do you know it's not four, five, and six? Right? right. Doesn't Jesus pray, let the disciples be one like we are one? So was it 15, a 15 head trinity now? Or right. if you include Paul 16? like Yeah, what about the uh, evil spirit of God that vexed King Shaul? See, or, like, oh or yeah, the burning see, bush. Yeah, is that or part the, of everything? Like, uh, like, or like the uh, for that matter, what about the the uh, death anything. angel that that killed all the firstborns during the Exodus? You know, yeah, yeah, anything, anything. The three angels about, that you can. What about Isaiah, who's called God? Right. What, what about Moses, that's called God? Oh, exactly. exactly. <laughs> like, like, where does it stop? Right? It's plural. Where does it stop? Right. Right. And uh, you have to understand like language and, and the rules of language, right? That's that's step one. Or modern we can't impose modern convention upon the Bible either. This is I mean, these are words that thirty five hundred years old. Exactly. Exactly. You know, Moses is called God. Does anyone actually think Moses is God? Exactly. No, of course exactly. not. But when he goes before Pharaoh, does Pharaoh have to recognize Moses as a power he has to contend with? Yes, of course. Deep. That's very deep. But yeah, going back to Christianity now, it's like they believe that Jesus is also a part of that God, right? Right. And and the thing about the Trinity is that it's not a, a Christian idea. No. Right? That is kind of it's kind of important to, to, to acknowledge because it's like one, the Holy Spirit is not talked about, and it's not like we know things about this Holy Spirit, right? And two, if the concept of Trinity, a, tri- a triune God, is is not a Christian, right? And mm-hmm. it's from other pagan um, religions from the past, right? It kind of right. explains why we need a Holy Spirit in the formula of things. Right. If If right? we were to examine ancient... Mostly Western. You don't even religions. have to go that far. Like, look at look you don't at have Zeus, to go that far. Look at Zeus, Hades, right. and Poseidon. Greek, Rome, right? Mm-hmm. And then and then Jupiter. You have, yep, Poseidon. Zeus, Hades, Poseidon. Yeah. And then you in in the Roman Rome. convention you have Jupiter, yeah. Pluto, and Neptune. Yeah, Rome's version of that, <laughs> right? Um, I think Egypt you had Amun Ra, Osiris, Osiris and Osiris is part of that. Horus? Osiris's no, wife, uh, Isis. Oh, is that is that, is that the three? Like, yeah. See, it comes back from like ancient Egypt, and even the the cross, the cross is o- found origins in ancient Egypt, right? Right. Like, like the earliest Christian symbol is the fish. Mhm. Yep. I mean, you you see that you see the uh, the the three god motif nearly everywhere. Every everywhere. Because you had all these extremely powerful things. You had this, the high god, right. you know, Zeus. Or, right. for example, like in uh, in Norse mythology. I right. mean, it never stopped at yeah. three, but you had, and that's how you get yeah. the Virgin Mary being deified and the saints being deified and this and that. Right. Um, but there was always the three big ones that were too right. big that you couldn't access. You know, and what are like the three main powers in the world? You have the heavens, of course. Zeus rules those. The seas, you know. Water, right. And then but the underworld. And the underworld, right. Yeah, like, like, you have to understand, um, like, ancient civilization's mindset. Like, like, I look at the world and I see, all I see is, like, pain and suffering. 
So if there's a god that's helping one guy get rich, it has to be another. Yeah, there has to be a god that's help that's making me poor, right? Exactly, exactly. And the two cannot be compatible. Right. Because right. if they can, then someone like me can be rich, like just like that. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And even even if you pull away the uh... see, Christianity really really mashed a lot together. Yeah. So. So, yeah. And I think that's why it became so popular. Right. Because you also see like, clean Eastern iron, dualism, clean too. Iron. You also see a Eastern dualism, which is like a good power versus an evil power. True. So they, now not only do you have like the triad of God, but now he's opposed by the quote unquote devil. You right. know, so now you have this evil deity versus the good deity. And we're kind of like just sitting in the mix. You know, they're vying for our soul, you know? Very true. That's just Man, an that's idea that's point. just completely foreign to Judaism, period. That's a very good point. Clay and iron, right? Just mm -hmm. like Daniel. Yep. Daniel's vision, because really, like, Christianity doesn't mesh. When, when you start picking apart, like, its its concepts and its philosophies, it doesn't it doesn't mesh properly. And, and, and that's how, like, you can see that, that that's some, something fishy about this religion, right? Right. Right. No, it doesn't matter where you start picking. And it's not, ju and it's not just because Peter came off a fishing boat. No, there's something, <laughs> there's something else that's fishy about it. Right, right. Yeah, um, I think we also have to talk about like, explicitly, right? God says twice in Numbers and in First Samuel that he is not a man. Right. Right? I think you covered it, was it yesterday? Mm-hmm. Right? When he's like, yeah. He says it twice that that he's not a man for him to lie. To, so if he becomes a man, then he becomes a liar, right? Right. And um, I think I think Rabbi Federal kind of made a good point when he's like, yeah. "Man is man, God is God." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, that's really what it is, right? But he's like, um, if God became a man, he'll become a liar right away, right? Yeah, it's exactly. Not, it's right. not. It's not that he can't do it. It's not what he can and can't do. Right. right, it's what he it's says what he, he will, will do, and yeah, what he what says he, he won't will do. And will not do, right? So if he becomes a man, he becomes a liar. I actually, when I first, Numbers twenty three nineteen was the verse for me, and this is why, I know, okay? I know. Because okay. when I was when I was teaching all this, okay. Um. So first of all, let's just start with this. What was, according to Christian like tradition, theology, whatever. What was the point of John the Baptist's baptism? For anyone who came to have it done, what was it for? John the Baptist? What was his point? Yeah. Like his baptism was called the baptism of repentance, right? Oh, yeah, that is true. That is true. Right? So, so, so the Numbers 2319 formula of what uh -huh. it says uh -huh. literally goes against everything Jesus did. Okay? So God is not a man that right. he can lie. Right? Right. Nor is he the son of man that he must repent. Right. So, God becomes a man, which makes him a liar. Oh my gosh. And he also becomes the son of man and gets the baptism of repentance. Everything about Jesus breaks Numbers 23, 19. Exactly. From the top and of the it, verse to the bottom. Like, let, let's break that down a little bit more, like son of man. Like, Jesus called many times son of man, right? Mm -hmm. Which in modern convention, you'll just see that translated as mortal. Exactly. Yeah, but why is it important that he's called son of man? Because what does Daniel say? Daniel calls the one like the son of man. But why right. does Daniel use the term man? Because that's what he is. <laughs> son exactly. of man. <laughs> exactly. Virgin births were a pro problem in his day. Right? Right. Like these are these are actual like specific terms that are used to warn us that like, yeah, you, we understand the civilization around us say that like all these Half half demigods are, are born from virgins, but then it was like one like the son of man. Right. A human, right? a mortal. A human, a mortal. Because, yeah, whatever. I, I kind of get it because back in the day, you like, you yeah. Couldn't like, you couldn't explain these tell. things. You, you, she's a virgin? Fine. She's a virgin, right? But, but it's like, okay, no, that's my son, right? I slept with this woman and this is my son, right? Like I could claim that I know that he's that she, he's not born a virgin, right? Right? Like son of man is an important important term. Why? Well, right. Well, think. I mean, think about all the. So hero worship. Hero worship is huge. 
Huge. I mean, it was it was huge. Hercules, it's Alexander pretty, the Great. Pretty much this, adultery. That, this, that. It's pretty much adultery. Think about it. Um, all of the, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, because right? all of these all of these massive figures in history. You know, Alexander the Great was real. We know this. Julius Caesar, this and that. Um, Alexander the Great, his mother claimed that he was the son of Zeus. Is that true? Of course not. But course. he now has the pa- he has divine. He's he's quasi divine. He has he has yeah. the yeah the power of a god. He doesn't have a human father to give yeah. his imperfections. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, Hercules, same thing. Uh, Julius Caesar, same thing. If I'm not res- mistaken, I, he I was supposed was to so be smart. son of Venus. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Um, I think he was so smart. Apparently, he was born a virgin. You know. And like, like I said, the the term "son of man" is important because don't put your trust in in the son of man. And whom there is no help. Hey, thank you. <laughs> right. Thank you. So it's like but Jesus is called Son of Man eighty-seven times. Eighty-seven times. Seven. It's like, why read half the Bible? You know what I mean? Like, like if you if you truly believe what you believe, you would not call Jesus Son of Man. Right. Yeah. Right. Capitalized man or not, you would not call Jesus Son of Man. And if if son of because I've actually heard Christian apologists say the term son of man denotes his messiahship according to Daniel. I said, okay. If that's really what you think, then Ezekiel must be the Messiah. Because in the entire corpus of the of the new of the new of the Christian Bible, I mean, I think I think I think son of man in the in the Hebrew Bible is used like ninety some times. And I think like Maybe it's not quite that many, but whatever it is, about ninety-five percent of them are all in the book of Ezekiel. Oh yeah. I mean, every time Ezekiel is addressed by God, it says, "O oh, son of man." Every time, just about nearly every time Ezekiel receives any word of prophecy, God calls him "son of man." And uh, like, like, okay, so, so what does God mean, "son of man"? And why did you change the the, the, the term? Right. You know what and, what, and what do you see in Ezekiel? You see the most esoteric, like unfathomable vision in nearly the entire Bible. You know, the the oh, the, Merkava, the, the, yeah. of dry the uh, well, no, I'm talking about when he um, when he sees like. The I think it's the throne, right? He's like he has the oh. unexplainable vision where he sees the yeah, angels, yeah, yeah, six wings yeah. and all. You know, and, and this is something circle, the human yeah, mind yeah, can't yeah, fathom. Like, I seen someone try to draw that out or like play a video for that. I'm like, oh my gosh, you 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 got a great mind to even just <laughs> interpret what he right. sees. Right, right. <laughs> but if you experience something like that and you try to relay that to somebody, what is something? What is someone in the ancient world gonna think? I'm crazy. Yeah, you're crazy or you're divine, right? Yeah, true, true. Very so true. it's 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 giving Very like true. a uh, letting him know, like, listen, dude, you're just Some human. Oh, okay. This is this is me. You're just human. You okay, know? I see what your point is. Yeah, that's a good point. Very good point. Yeah, I think that um, the term "son of man" like. It's very important for Christians to realize that when they say that, it's kind of like negating the whole. Foundation of your theology. Now, if if he was called son of the son of woman eighty seven times in the New Testament, cool, fine, yeah, whatever. True, but he's not. True, true, and and like the whole the whole the whole thing like to to really like put everything in perspective is like Judaism believes in one God, right? And and I think it was you who actually kind of mentioned it to me. Was like um, Islam is kind of like a I guess like a, a a damage controller, like a a re redirected monotheism for the for the for the Gentiles, right. right? Well, if if I don't know if you looked it up or not, did you look into the uh, we had talked about the Ebionites I tried, influence I tried upon Islam? Yeah, did you look I tried that looking up? for it. I tried looking for it, but I don't think I found what uh, what uh, you were you were trying to uh, lead me to. Okay, so like the Ebionites, they were like the James and Peter type Christians. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, definitely James. Yeah, but yeah, had to keep, yeah, the, had to keep the, Torah. the Torah. Didn't believe Jesus, Jesus was divine. divine. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you strip away 
the Arab part of Islam, you really have Ebionism, right? So, um, and I actually spoke with Tobias Singer about this, and the the Ebionites lost, but they mm-hmm. had to have gone somewhere. Oh, yeah. they, they weren't killed off, you know. They had to have gone somewhere. So, in their influence, in my opinion, really leads to Islam. Their teachings upon probably trickled down into Arabian culture as they're kind of like kicked out because, you know, they lost, mm-hmm. you know, the temples mm-hmm. destroyed all this. They probably are, are leaving uh, another exile because they were mm-hmm. Jews. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And that influence in the Arabian Peninsula, you know, a couple hundred years later, you now have Islam. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Personally, I, 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 I actually really, I really believe that. Yeah. That can make sense. That can make sense because, yeah, it can really make sense. And, like, if you look at, like, what Islam was doing, it kind of learned that what not to do, in, in a sense. Like, there is no image of Muhammad. Why? Because they saw what Christians did with Jesus and they started worshipping Jesus. So they're like, okay, we're not going to have pictures of Muhammad. Right. Right. So we don't cross that line. They're, they're very, very particular about crossing what who, the line of... of yeah, celebrating this man as a, a highly given pro- a gift from God to us a, as a prophet, but we don't worship him as God. We mm-hmm. make sure we don't worship him as God, right? So there's no image of Muhammad, and like I feel like that's like Islam just looking at what what Christians Christianity did is like yeah, you started off with the one God, right? Then you moved into like worshiping son of god and then now you have a triune god it's like Mm -hmm. right like what how can we safeguard ourselves from doing the same thing that we've seen done right and i i personally believe that like being too hopeful like the followers if jesus really existed and he made these claims like it's me this is going to happen you know yeah um, the followers were just so hopeful that they truly believed it was him. He got killed, and he was like, well, okay, well, then something must have to happen. Maybe we were wrong about Isaiah 53. Maybe that was about him, and he has to come back, you know? So, yeah, you know, I think what really happens is your your preconceived notions, your impositions get then put upon your beliefs, and, you know, 2,000 years later, you now have what we have. Yeah, like I heard a rabbi, um, he said that people don't change. Uh, they don't change for the truth. They change the truth for what to, to what right. they love, right? And it's like, yeah, these guys love Jesus so much that you know what? He's the Messiah. He has to come back. Like, I I could I could live in a world where Jesus thought he was the Messiah, right? I could live in a world where Jesus actually thought he was the Messiah, but the Jewish Messiah. You know what I mean? Like. Like, he didn't think he was divine. I can do nothing except through the Father, right? I, he didn't think he was right. Divine, right. divine, right? And, like, you see it when he's hanging on the cross. He's like, okay, I guess I'm not the Messiah. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. It's that, kind yeah. of like the, That wasn't a fulfillment of any like, prophecy in the book yeah. of Psalms. That yeah, was just, exactly. if, if we were to believe he actually said that, that was yeah. him saying, like, come on, God, I, I thought it was, was me. Wrong, man. <laughs> you know, I thought it was me. What'd you do? What's going on here? Yeah, like, no. like I, if if I've, we, I've we, always, sorry, I mean to cut you off, but okay. I always there's a there's a saying I heard and I really like it, and it's that in every lie there's a little bit of truth. There's some truth, yeah. Yeah, like like if he did all these miracles, right? I could see how people would assume that he's the Messiah. I could see that if if he's doing miracles, right? But um. When he died, it's kind of like... Yeah, okay. Next next contestant. Like, you know, like, like... Yeah. Like, there's nothing wrong believing that someone's the Messiah. So, you know, it's getting your Messiah wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. But believing... Right, because, like, I mean, in, in Tanakh, he's referred to as the branch. Right. You know, what's... Jesse, what are, yeah. yeah. Look, if you think about a tree, how many branches are there? That means that there are... In each generation, mm-hmm. there are... You know... All, in every generation, there has to be someone. There has to be someone. That's that it is. could be. Yeah. You know. Exactly. 
Exactly. That's why he's called the branch because a tree has many branches. It's not. It's not just that. Um, I mean, uh, I've heard it taught that Hezekiah could have been Messiah yeah, if I, I heard if from the that, whole right? nation repented, or you know. So, um, yeah, the branch from the root of Jesse. Yeah. And it's not like yeah. a tree just shoots up and it's just one branch. One branch. Yeah. Yeah. And the biggest thing is, is like, how do you know the Messiah is supposed to come back? There's nothing that says that. And and I think we didn't touch upon this, but we have to like say explicitly that that Isaiah says the Messiah is going to fear God. Right? Right. Yeah. Like, oh like, yeah. Like that's a human. Why would we why would God fear himself? That doesn't make no sense. Right. Mm-hmm. I I think in Daniel even, uh when that son of man, when it's talking about that, the one coming is the son of man. Mm-hmm. I don't want to misquote it, but I think it's something along the lines of his authority is given to him by God. Yeah, authority will be given to him, I think. It's something, something, like something along those lines, but whatever it is, he doesn't have it already. And it is given to him by God, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, mm-hmm. If he's God, he should have that already. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. The question is actually God. Exactly. What does he need to get from God? Nothing. Exactly. And it's like, if you think Jesus is God, right? Jesus has no power. Right? Every time he's doing something, he's praying to, to Hashem first. Right. Right? Every time he's doing something. And I can't do nothing except through a father. And if mm-hmm. Jesus is God, why, do he has a different, why, does it, why is his will different, different than the father's? Yep. Right. Take this cup from me, but not my will, but your will. Right. right. So in Christianity, there's either a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, contradictions between like God Himself, or you're actually you actually believe there's multiple gods. Like that, there, there has to. Yeah, you have to. Or, to. or you believe that God has multiple personalities. Yeah. yeah. So for that's, for like, Jesus to kneel in the garden. And pray to himself. That's what you have to rationalize out now if you believe Jesus is 100% God. Yeah. That yeah. Jesus was praying to the spirit inside himself. Exactly. And that's just absolutely insane. Either like, Jesus has schizophrenia. Exactly. Or he's exactly. not God, period. Like, think, think about this, Steve, okay? If someone comes up to you and says, I have two people, like I have multiple personalities, right? What you as a doctor that, that treat this illness, right? It's an illness. It's called the illness, right? What right. do you do? You give him pills, you give him medication, you give him a treatment. Yep. So why is it okay? Why is it okay that that you treat humans, right, for the same thing that you say your God has, multiple personalities, but you say it's okay for God? Right. Right. Then why treat humans? Then then that means like the per, the human that has multiple personalities should be more like God than any of us. Right. Right. Think. Like, another another very good question because you touched on the Holy Spirit. Right. Um, you see in Tanakh that there are prophets that it says that the holy, the Ruach HaKodesh was upon them. The spirit of holiness. You know, why, why did it disappear and why did it have to be sent again later? And, and, and how is it on those prophets, right? Disappeared. And now since Jesus died, whoever accepts Jesus gets, gets this, 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 this Holy Spirit. Right. But it, to me, it doesn't make sense. Like, why, mm-hmm. why, why would it be given? You know, right. if this is the way you want to rationalize things, that okay. you know, people can be given the Holy Spirit, right? Why is it given in Tanakh, and then, you know, unbeknownst to us, it apparently disappears, and then it has to be given again. If if God is an omnipresent being, where to go? Yeah, where to go? And it went from going. From prophet to prophet to everybody who just accepts Jesus, right? Right. And um, for anyone who says that our that the the defining of ruach hakodesh as spirit of holiness is wrong, well, have you ever heard the song Torah Hakadosha, or have you ever heard Rabbi T- Singer call it that, the Torah no. Hakadosha? No. You hear Who's the difference that? though. The no. Holy Torah, Torah Hakadosha. Okay, okay. Oh. Two okay. different words. Same root, two different True. words. True. Holy Torah, spirit of holiness. Wow. Wow. 
I mean, Ezekiel is is blatant like, about this. It's it's yeah. explicit. I'll take from you your stone heart and give you a heart of flesh. You know, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The two the two are, you know, this is talking about in the future. You know, mm-hmm. the righteous. Mm-hmm. If, if no one's gonna have to teach their neighbor about God, well, what's that mean? That everyone, of course, has the spirit of holiness upon them, right? True. That they all are like of the level of a prophet because True. if the prophet is teaching people. Then obviously he knows no, something they don't. Wow, wow, yeah. Then we all become at that level, and we don't need to be taught. Wow, deep. Yeah, like that. The Holy Spirit thing really like drove me away. Like that, that, that started to make me question everything, which I'm grateful for, honestly. Right, right. But like, 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 honestly, the more you try to look for it, you're not gonna find anything because it doesn't exist. Right. And, and you're they, gonna find like 18 million different answers from 18 million different people. Oh, definitely. And then right? you you get further along into the New Testament, and it really starts getting esoteric. The role of the Holy Spirit, that now it's making you speak in different languages, and <laughs> yeah. it's it's a manifestation that now you have a divine spirit inside of you. Inside you, yeah. You know, um, where's that in the Tanakh? Why does it not talk about any Jews speaking in tongues? Yeah, yeah, that's a that, that's a good question that people should be asking. If you if you as a Christian are willing to say that God doesn't change, now this is a this is a a tenet in probably all three Abrahamic faiths, right? Yeah, I'm sure Islam would say Allah does not change. Eternal. One of the and names for God is eternal. Right. Uh, Judaism. God does not change. Right. right. So now why why all of a sudden, um, does the only proof that you actually know who God is is that you have to do some crazy out of body really like experience, you know? And it's like that's only like recent, honestly. Mhm. Yeah, the iteration you see it in now, yeah, of course. Yeah. Because yeah. because orthodox Christianity said that was meant to be like just for then and it doesn't happen anymore. Mhm. Mm-hmm. You know? The Catholics would tell you that straight up. That right. that uh the speaking in tongues experience was meant for those times and not now. You know? So some people say that like like yeah, it was for those times and it's for like um people with the message speak like other languages. Right? Like mm-hmm. this is what an interpretation I got is like they can speak different languages so they can spread the word. Right. Now that well, like we have like everything at ac- access to us that we shouldn't so- be able to do that now. So that's, I'll, that's, hit, you with, I'll hit you with the Pentecostal hermeneutic because that's what I was raised in. I did right. it. Okay. Spoken tongues. Okay. Uh, so you'll see throughout the New Testament where it's, you know, Paul says, yea, though I speak in the tongues of men and angels. So okay. that's how they get like the idea that it doesn't have to be a real language. It right, can be right, 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 right. But right. there also are other accounts through Acts that it says, um, you know, this many were added to the assembly that day. This many were added to the church that day. Uh, they spoke in tongues and were baptized. And there's even one specific case where it says they speak in tongues first and then they're baptized. Um, so, oh, wow. <laughs> so uh, it. I d- do I think that that's like the right thing to do? No, of course not. But right, right. after being raised in the Pentecostal faith, I certainly could see that there is more than one at least allusion to the to the and even if it didn't say you know spoken tongues explicitly it would say like they were filled with the holy spirit and then they were baptized but in one instance it says that the tongue part happened first and then they were baptized wow. um but in any of these scenarios does it say that the speaking in tongues was different from the first time because that speaking in tongues the first time was like a sign to the passerbys outside mm-hmm. it's like oh wow they're saying awesome things about god in our own language and these are just some stupid galilean right. fishermen right right you know right, exactly if, you, if but later on in acts you would think the author of acts expected you read earlier so it would only make sense that it's the same concept right right but right. regardless you know orthodox christianity doesn't believe that's relevant anymore doesn't believe it's for anymore you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they base that upon the book of john where it says and jesus breathed upon them and said receive ye the holy spirit 
and then they went off and started doing all their little miraculous things. Right, right. Yeah, so like the Holy Spirit don't agree on how the Holy Spirit works. <laughs> Yeah, the, the gospels don't agree with a lot of things, man. <laughs> and that's where it comes down to, you know, history and textual yeah, criticism. Yeah, very important. I agree, with that. I agree with that. John, the latest gospel, is magnify edifying Jesus to the highest level, right? So just him breathing on you gives you the Holy Spirit. Whereas <laughs> earlier in Luke Acts, um, of course you need some type of manifestation of the Holy Spirit, you know? Yeah, and, and it's like, where did the Holy Spirit come from, right? And, and I truly believe it's from, like, these pagan ideas from, like, like before. Right? Well, most certainly. It's, it's just a need to have a third God. Like, like imagine we could be living in a world where it's, like, just two, like, the Father and Son. That's it. Yeah. We could well, be. I, how does Why Jesus three? word it? Uh, after I ascend to my Father, I will send the Comforter to you. Right. 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 So I guess I guess that like that plus the pagan ideas did did enable a concept of God with like a triune God. But but right. honestly, like think about this. Who was talking to Jesus when he's like, "This is my my son who I am well pleased," mm -hmm. right? So obviously there's two there's two there's two um two concepts right there. When I say Father, you think of something. When I say Jesus, you think of something. When I say Holy Spirit, right. you think of something else. Right. 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 And even even in the most oneness modalist Pentecostal church, there is still an exclusivity to God and Jesus. Yeah, you can't separate. Because left can't, with yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, you have you have the con different concepts, but it's like, who's if Jesus is God? Why, like, like, ask these questions. Like, so God's talking to Jesus. Like, okay, Jesus, I need you to go to Earth, okay? But you can't stay with me for the nine months, and I'll put your spirit in when the baby being born. You gotta go in the in in, in Mary right now, right? For nine months, then be born, then grow up, learn to talk, learn to walk, right? Do all these things, and then when you're ready, then go out on your mission. It's like wait, if Jesus is God, you should know everything right now, right? right. You should know everything. <clears throat> like, even I even saw people um, saying that uh, Elijah wasn't born. Because mm. you see that Elijah is not the uh, son of uh, in, whoever, right? Well, they say it's the Elijah same thing about, about uh, Malkit Tzedek, because it doesn't, it doesn't give a genealogy for him in the Bible. Yeah, exactly. How many like, characters in the Bible do you see that they don't give a genealogy for? Exactly, exactly. Like you don't need hundreds. Need exactly, hundreds, you don't need thousands you don't need probably. Exactly, you don't know. Like, like there's a reason why genealogies are given, but if it's not important, it's not important, and only Hashem can dictate what's important or not. Right. I mean, the... and and look at Jesus' genealogy. If you're telling me that he's born of a mother, how come the common name in, in both genealogies is Joseph? Right, and you and they purport that he's not even the real dad. So what's yeah, it matter? Like, like adoption like, literally means nothing as far as Bible lineage. You're telling me this is the son of God, <laughs> and in both genealogies, God is left out of his genealogy. Yeah, right. Yeah, like if if if. if the Quran says that the one sin that God will not um, forgive is if you associate a partnership with him. Mm. Right? And and uh, like you have to like a partnership goes beyond like having having a wife, I guess, right? And this is what I'm saying. This is, is what I'm saying. It's a damage relationship. control. Yeah, damage exactly. Control. Because what is exactly. Christianity? Christianity is the mother load of a partnership with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is like yeah, like, so he doesn't have a wife. Yes, he has a son. And, like, think about, think about, let's go, let, 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 let's, let's reverse time now. It's like, okay, God is so big that we have a barrier to him. So we need mm -hmm. Jesus, right? But now right. Jesus becomes so big, we need a bar there's a barrier to Jesus. So who do we go to? Mary. Then we go to this saint, and then that saint, and then this saint, right. and that saint. So it's like, where do you stop? And there are there are some influential influential gospels that didn't actually make it into the canon. Uh, one of which says 
Mary was a perpetual virgin, that she was still a virgin even after she gave birth to Jesus. That they yeah, did a literal that they did a literal gynecological gynecological examination on Mary. The the um the okay. midwife pulls her hand out right. and can't believe what happened because, you know, she's a virgin. Her, it's still intact. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And she le- she was a virgin forever. Yeah, and well, then what about James? Uh, well, the, the rationalization of that is that it's actually his cousin. Oh, I see. Yeah, I mean, there's no there's no proof of that in the Bible, of course. But <laughs> yeah, of course. But I, but honestly, what it comes down to is that if you really want something to be true, you right? And you can find it. You can find right. some way of making something true. Yeah. Anything. Well, why is that? It's because sex in Greco Ge- Greco Rome was just so icky. Right. You right. know that someone that's venerated couldn't have sex. You know. Right. Period, you know. That's that's a main reason why Jesus was never married. Right. Right. Which would be a, like a like a that'd be weird in those days. For, it'll for be very weird. weird. It would be very, it's, very it's, weird. It'd be written everywhere. Like it'll be talked about. It's like. That's why I believe Jesus, like some of some of you believe Jesus didn't exist. I mean, the, the very first commandment given to mankind is be fruitful, multiply. The, yeah. You know, get married, have some kids, you yeah. know. So it'd be, it would be very, yeah, very abnormal. Yeah. Especially the Messiah. The Messiah's supposed to have kids. Yeah, it's meant to be dynastic because his kids are going to take over when he's gone. Like, you know? who? I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, what did Jesus accomplish for him right. to, for him to, to be bestowed Messiahship and to be bestowed divinity? And, that, you know, and that's the problem they're left with. Um, they, they really are left with the problems that Nicaea came up with. You know, if you would have just said, OK, he was a vicarious atonement. He was a man, period. God's God. He's man. He was just sent as a sacrifice. Yes, there's plenty of problems with that. But you're not left with the fact that you just made a man God. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah, even the Holy Spirit is part of this. This trinity is like, like. How do you, how do you... Right, you believe God's a spirit, but yet there's a yeah. separate entity that's his spirit? Like, what kind of sense does that make? Yeah, exactly. Like, like what? Like, what? That's, that's, that's even like a, a more bizarre partnership. It's like, like, you just create an extra God just to, just to, just to do it. <laughs> and that's why I believe, like, three needed to be a thing. Like, like, yeah. look at, look at because, the council because... of Nicaea. It's like, there's no Jews there. Right? Oh, of course not. Of course what? what not. Exactly, exactly. What were the what were the uh, what were the religions they were coming from? They were used to these triune gods. This was normal. They were used to gods having sons oh, and yeah, daughters. Definitely. And, everything. and right? so it's like, okay, well, Jesus is another one. You look at the miracles. He had to have been, right? It's like, um, didn't uh, didn't uh, some Sai Baba or somebody do it? Like, like we have witnesses of his actions up to now, right? It's only right. fifty years ago. Right? So yeah, you like, see Hindu miracles all the time. Yeah, it's like guys who can not, make themselves levitate not, and all sorts of crazy stuff like that. You know? Yeah, like this is not it this means is not nothing. new. It means zero. It means zero. It's not new. It's not old. It's just that you just found one guy to make it popular because, I, like you said, Christianity is like is like the the legs of clay and iron. It just takes everything from everything. It doesn't really mesh well, but but right. it just takes everything from everything. So it's like, you know, come join us. We're just like you. Right. In my in my study time, uh, you know, like the story of Bilam, right? He was yes. he was conscripted to yes. curse the Israelites, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, well, we were we were talking about this concept and it was basically like the pagans needed a power need like a because there has to be balance in the world. Right. If God is right. going to be doing very explicit miracles on behalf of the Israelites, of course, you're going to need like explicit explicit esotericism for the non-Jews, right? Otherwise, there's no free will. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, as we were learning, it was basically Balaam was Moses's counterweight. As it says, Balaam was rather powerful. He knew powerful. God, he knew God, yeah. You know, yeah. there were all, it does, just, yeah, it didn't mean that he was doing things right, but there were, uh, there has to be balance, you know? Like yeah, it, it's not even it's not even saying that these ancient esoteric things didn't work. 
because mm-hmm. Pharaoh's Pharaoh's magicians could Turn recreate the, the plagues. Yeah, exactly. you know. So even the even the falsest of religions, their esoteric practices, quote unquote, work. Yeah, it has to. You know, or they can perform the miraculous. Does it mean it's correct? Of course exactly. not. Exactly. 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 It's like like if only one religion was answering prayers and one religion was doing miracles, it's like then why are they? Where's your free will at? Where's the free will? Where is the free will? Right. I explained that. I explained that to a, a Christian relative of mine recently, and they like turned pure white. Like they never thought of it that way, because you always base you always base the foundation of your religion on well we we can perform miracles, mm-hmm. and everyone's everyone else's miracles must just be fake. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. Well, then you go into the Torah and show well hey you you will say with your mouth that. The Egyptians could do the exact same things, you know, and then you scroll a few pages forward and get to Deuteronomy 13. And it's like, and it says it right here. Miracles mm-hmm. don't mean a thing. Mm-hmm. If, mean if, if other religions can't perform miracles, well, guess what? Your free will's gone and you're just a robot. And, and like, look what they teach you in Sunday school. right? Look what they focus on when they're when, in Sunday service. It's like all the miracles of Jesus. Right. Right. Why? Why? Why do they focus on the miracles of Jesus? Because he didn't do anything to to accomplish any messiahship in the world. Yeah, Not yeah. one prophecy was fulfilled. Oh, but he was Jewish. <laughs> he was Jewish. That's and, like he, the only and, one and he God. healed the blind. And he healed the blind. Like, think about it. He could be the people's champ. That's why his story stays so long. He healed the blind. Right? He, he took away uh, leprosy. Right? He walked on water. This is the people's champ. They must right. have loved him. Now, Look what he did for them. He fed, he fed 5,000 people. Right. What's that? I said, take this with a grain of salt. Sure. Um, I saw this in Joseph Atwell's book. Okay. That when, you know, Jesus spits on some mud, heals a guy's eyes yeah. with it. Yeah. I'm almost positive Vespasian did the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I saw that too. Vespasian did the same thing. Well, according to legend, right? <laughs> like, well, yeah, but that's put? that's why I really buy into the fact that this was a mismatch of a mishmash of everything. Like they were just using every motif they could to build this thing, you know, and it's just layer after layer after layer agree. of agree. historicism, mysticism. Uh, the word I'm gospel really means true. like good news of battle, you know. It doesn't just mean good news. These the a gospel, a gospel was like. For example, like on the front of the newspaper during World War II, like you have like a brilliant headline that we're crushing the Germans. That is a gospel. It's good war news. And that's what the gospel good was. Because, what was Vespasian? Yeah, he was waging war against. He was the a general, at- man. He yeah, and then he became the people's champ. Um, so yeah, I, she's, I she's tend to Messiah, man. That there she's is just Messiah. That, yeah. I mean, wow. Joseph explains that in his writings. That, oh, it was uh, actually Vespasian. You know, Vespasian was the... Yeah. So I, I tend to I tend to believe it was pulled together from so many different sources, we can't even pinpoint one. I was reading through Kings, like First Kings, and like all the, all the, all the miracles of Elijah and Elisha, I'm like, Jesus did this. Jesus did this. Jesus oh, yeah. This. Yep. Because he had, to, he had to be the... Why do you think Elijah's the other one that's there when he transfigures? It's him and Moses. Because those are the two that he's modeled after. Oh, So it's showing that he's that's superseding. True. That's true. Moses, that's true. Pharaoh tried to kill all the kids, right? Herod tried to kill all the kids. Moses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you go through that and go through all that. Like, like Moses got the Torah, right? And, and the new Torah was Jesus. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's actually crazy. Up on the mountain for 40 days. Jesus is Tempted. in the wilderness for fasting for 40 days. days. Oh, man. Yeah, like, yo, there's so many things but, to draw upon him. Like, but the, like but what Elijah they raised They had up. to, like, build up his resume, but they also had to kind of, like, make it better because, you know, Elijah fe- feeds a multitude. Well, guess what? Jesus is going to feed two multitudes. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, Yes. Elijah raises the dead, Jesus does too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't, yeah, and and Lazarus, he's already starting to stink. You know, you know, the, yeah, the yeah, kid, he just yeah. died. He only just oh, passed he away. Just, Lazarus, he just missed the third day. You just missed the third day. Just missed the third day. Yeah. 
So that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like they they had to yeah. use this. Hype it up. Yeah, they had to really be like, well, listen, you you Jews had these pretty awesome prophets, but guess what? This guy's the real deal. He was all just all the stuff they did is just to show get you ready for what this guy is gonna do. Yeah, but like yeah, like 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 we said, it's like what does that mean? Like God 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 says that in Deuteronomy thirteen and like miracles doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm sending this man to, to test you. Right. Warning signs, warning signs. Mm-hmm. Like, like God has no form, right? Like when you when 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 Moses says like God has no form, at least you worship it, right? But then the Tanakh goes and says that you know God God saved them with a mighty hand and outstretched arm, right? Mm-hmm. Like you have to think about it is like then they're, they're not saying God has these parts. No, They're but using the, these terms so that we as a human being can understand. Can understand. And like we said, God's the name that the ineffable name of God, the four letter name, the Yod the Hey, the Vav and the Hey. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We need to touch uh, this. That's his infathomable. Like that's that's the name we don't say because it's something we cannot fathom. Right. Like we as a mortal being cannot understand eternity. Right. Because that's really like it was, is, and will be. He etern- right. He inhabits all of eternity. Right. It's a nature like, we cannot fathom. Think about it. Like, I, I, I really, I really cannot imagine it because. Right. I mean, I, can you Einstein remember says, anything before you were born? Exactly. Exactly. Like Einstein says and, that, that, that light and time is intrinsically in sync. You can't have light and you can't have time without each other. What right. is the first thing God creates? Light. Light. So he makes time the same time. So mm-hmm. God created time the same time he made light. So mm-hmm. this is a being that that exists outside of time, right? Like that is incredible. Like 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 that's why he right, and that's something we cannot fathom. We, we in our finite mind cannot can. even consider. Can. We can't even begin to try okay. to understand what it means okay. to be eternal. To, yeah, to be the to be the eternal creator one. of time. Of time, time. Think about that. Like everything we measure is through time. And now you're telling me we can't even measure the universe because time was a created concept. Time's a created thing. Right. And think about this. They, by that same logic, that same uh, theory, the universe continues to grow. Right. If the universe is continuing to grow in all directions or whatever. Right. What was what was there before it started? Yeah, where's it going? <laughs> yeah, where's it going? Yeah, where's like, the ends of it at? Where's the ends? How's it stop? Exactly. Like, I think you I cannot. Think I, the rational mind cannot say that happened by accident. I'm sorry. Right. Right. I, I, exactly. Exactly. It's like, and then and then create a world so. Part of, part of my part of my language, but perfect. It really is a perfect world. Like, like I, I said before, like my my glasses sit on my ears and my nose perfectly, so my eyes can see right. perfectly. Right. Right. Like it's when you look at it, it's like uh, intelligent design to the max. Like I can't. No one right. it, No one can create what what, what is created to make right. a tree die in the in the in the fall but come back to life in spring. Come yeah. on. I was I was watching that same. I mentioned the the girl from MIT that believes right, in intelligent right. design. She's the intelligent design scientist. Right. They were trying to – have you heard like the primordial soup theory that life was basically like – basically amino acids, which are like what make up proteins, mm-hmm. were just floating around in this primordial soup, like this, mm-hmm. this liquid with all these different chemicals in it. And by hitting each other, they eventually merged and became life. Okay. Okay. So this is something you can verify. This is something you can recreate. So what they did is they made a primordial soup, and they began testing it. Uh, in order for this to happen, I think that the chances of it happening even once, and to make an organism, it has to happen like billions of times, obviously, because our cells are made up of right. you know, right. trillions of times probably. But for right. it to happen once, I think – they maybe they maybe had it happen once, like out of 
over 15 million tries. See. Now times that by a couple of trillion, and then you get one cell. You know, like. Wow. Yeah, Yeah, so, like, yeah, it obviously is not an accident, right? And, like, honestly, between me and you, it's like. These are perfect conditions with a hot. Basically, it was like they put the highest possible concentration of. You know every pro every amino acid needed, which wouldn't have been how the actual primordial. Yeah, so they 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 scaled this they scaled the game they scaled yeah. the game, but they and still it still wouldn't lost. work. Yeah, yeah, they rigged the game, but they still kind of lost. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Right? And like like going back to like like the time thing, it's like making Jesus God is like limiting God because now God yeah. needs to 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 to. To be limited by the, the concept of time now. And God yeah, also miracles needs. and everything, but he's still now bound to the law of time because he's in he's right. on earth. Right? And he needs to use the bathroom. He needs to use the bathroom. Man. Like like so uh, but, you, you but God about, has to uh, sit on the pot, I can't worship Bob. Huh? Yeah, like you <laughs> talked about um with Federal, Rabbi Federal yesterday. Mm-hmm. Right? If you if your God's got to sit on the, the, the toilet, like mm-hmm. is that God, like but, if you have to, if you have to change your God's diapers, I think it's time that you need to change your God, right? Right. right? I mean, there's no coincidence that you see in ancient Egypt, um, and even if you want to say it was Ptolemaic period, cool, that's still a couple hundred years before the Christian era. Uh, you see so many statues of uh, Isis, bare-breasted, breastfeeding Horus. Wow. Um, how many, how many paintings do you see wow, baby of Jesus. the Virgin Mary bare-breasted breastfeeding Jesus? <laughs> now, do you, can you worship a God that needs to breastfeed? I can't. True. Like, yeah, like, like I think about it, like, like I was talking to somebody the other day, right? And it kind of came out in conversation. It was like, uh, mother, mother of God. All right. And I like right away, I was like, blasphemy. My God cannot have a mother. It doesn't make no damn sense. And it's like, right. and, and like, right. that was taken back. He was like, well, well, yeah, yeah, you have a good point, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like these these things are all like unconventional I mean, things. Ancient Greek thought. You know why it's called the Milky Way galaxy? Uh, there was a god no. breastfeeding off of a goddess. Uh huh. If I'm not mistaken, the story goes that um, basically it was like it got ripped away. The child was ripped away, or someone so, else tried to so the breast milk is leaking. and the breast milk leaked out, and now you have the Milky Way stars. You know, but it's but it's yeah. image of God's breastfeeding. Yeah, yeah, and that is like you can Google it right now: Jesus and Virgin Mary breastfeeding, and you will find hundreds. I mean, hundreds of paintings. Yeah, and it's motifs. Yeah. We're not saying that. Like, I would never say this because it's way too dogmatic. Is that Jesus was just based on one other ancient deity? It's no, it's not. You know, it's not possible that it was. He was just based off of one thing. It's the motifs. It's the world. Mm-hmm. It's the mm-hmm. mind that's putting the story to paper. Mm-hmm. That's you know? true. Yeah. Yeah. And when you yeah. can like get past that, because anyone can discredit the claim that Jesus is just a carbon copy of someone else. Right. You know, anyone can discredit that because, of course, right. you're going to find parallels that aren't there. Right. But when you realize it's actually the worldview, that it's the it's the the motifs, what they were raised in, the tradition they were raised in, Concepts. and that Concepts. all gets imposed yeah. upon the text. You're like, oh wow, now it's all lining up with every every you know tradition. Every every pagan god has similarities. It's true. You know. Yeah. Mm, do, you, do you want to add anything? Do you want to go anywhere with this? Uh, we're over an hour now. I think that's good, man. I th- yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, finish up with um, Judaism, Islam, one God, no other, period. No shape. Uh, I think that's important to say. There's, there's no shape. There, God has no shape, no form. He's a power. He's the power. Uh, yeah. He's the power. The power is. The powers. <laughs> right? And like, and I contrast that with any other religion, any other religion, like God took took form, took a shape, took 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 mm-hmm. a human body, right? right? Um, 
So really, what, what what is the foundation? Where where you find it? Where you find this? Like Trinity is not even in the New Testament. The term Trinity right. is not in the New Testament. Exactly right. right. Um. So you really making up concepts and and and, and terminologies, right? That 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 is completely foreign to all your your church fathers, really. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. So you just, I think Christians need to just reflect on that and just just try to um, try to understand what the Tanakh says about God. Like, if if Trinity is not in the New Testament, what does your Bible really say about God? Right. Where does it come from? Right. What mm-hmm. the what 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 is the attributes? And, and contrast that to what you believe and what you what you what you know your whole life. And mm-hmm. try don't put your beliefs into the Bible. Try to Figure right. out what the Bible is saying first, and then compare what you believe or what you've been told to what the Bible is actually saying. Yep, exactly right. That's the best advice I have for anybody, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that pretty much splits it right down the middle. You have you have true radical monotheism. Yeah. There is one God, no other. Yeah. You know, uh, no shape, no form. Right. Inhabits eternity. Right. Uh. And then you have everything else, and um, just because you're told you're told this like this is how it's been doesn't make it true, right? Right. I mean, if I was a three, if I was a four or five year old Roman boy in you know the year seventy BCE, I would have believed wholeheartedly that there was a Jupiter. I would have yeah, believed exactly. wholeheartedly there was a Neptune, and he's controlling right. the oceans, and Jupiter's sending lightning bolts down when someone does something bad. Yeah, exactly. No. Right? Like don't change don't change the truth to what you love. Like actually change to what the truth is. Try to find the truth and change to that truth. That's really right. what it is in the end all. Like I understand prejudice dies hard. I really do. I really get it. But but at at this point you're squaring off against God and and, and there's no way you can win. Right. So you might as well jump on board or by God, good luck. Right. Or just stop learning. Disregard everything we just said because you can only be judged on what you know. So try to know as little as possible. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's like, wow. Then you're going to get in trouble for ignorance. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but all hey, right, my man, friend. I think this is good. I, very, I think that pretty much sums it up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, viewers... Uh, before we started this, Jason said, I think this is going to be a short one today. <laughs> <laughs> I always say that. <laughs> I knew it. Oh, man, it's true. I always say that, though. We just go All on. right, guys. Jason, as always, I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, man. It's always a pleasure. Every time. Um, and everybody, thank you for watching. Uh, uh, this was another episode of Rediscovering God, and we'll see you next time. Yeah,